Hi, this is a quick introduction uh, on how to get started with your MATLAB model of the dynamics of your truck. The first thing you need to do is download the three MATLAB M files from Blackboard, put them into a clean folder, and uh, then go to MATLAB and navigate to that folder where you've downloaded them to. Uh, then you can open those files in the editor. And we've got all of them there and I'll just quickly uh, explain how they work. So the top level one, the one that you'll be calling to actually run the model, is vehicle model. And the main thing the vehicle model does is it calls ODE45. If you can't remember exactly how ODE45 works, that's not a problem, neither can I, but we can use the MATLAB help. Find out what the syntax is. Here we go. So this is how we use it. Uh, our solver is ODE45. We need the main thing we need to give it is ODE fun, which is a function that defines the differential equation we're trying to solve. The differential equation that we want to solve is this thing up here. It's an equation that connects the speed of the truck u to the torque provided by the motor tm. That's the equation that we're going to solve. Now, if we go back to our code, uh, the function that we pass into ODE forty five is vehicle axel. That's the function that is going to implement that ordinary differential equation which describes how the truck performs. So ODE45 is doing the brute force work of solving our differential equation basically by evaluating it lots of times. So many times it's going to call vehicle axel. So let's take a look at vehicle axel. Vehicle axel complies with the syntax that's needed for the uh, ODE fun that we give to ODE45 it returns du dt, the acceleration, uh, and it takes as inputs the time t, which we don't actually use in the function, but we have to take it, and it takes as another input the velocity u. In here, we define properties of the vehicle, all the properties except for the power plant characteristics. We then compute the traction force generated by the wheels as a result of the power plant torque. And the power plant torque gets conversion into traction by the action of the gearing with gear ratio OK and the wheels which have diameter D. So the total force on our truck is just the traction force and so the acceleration du dt is traction divided by mass. You can later add on things like aerodynamic forces or rolling resistance or gravity forces to traction. The gravity forces would apply if the truck is going up or down a slope. Now, vehicle XL is going to get called many times by ODE 45 Every time it gets called, it's going to call power, power plant torque to find out what the torque delivered by the motor is at this particular speed, omega. So let's take a look at power plant torque. Here it is. It's a function that takes a single input omega, which is written as w in the code, and it returns a single output t, which is torque. Inside power plant torque at the moment, two example power plants are coded up. Uh, one of them is the Tesla uh, DC motor which is in Tesla electric cars. This is what its characteristic looks like. This is torque as a function of speed. Uh, the red curve is the one that we're looking at here. To implement it in the code as an example, I've simplified the curve but uh, this dropping off curve I've modeled it just as a straight line and I've converted the RPM into radians per second and the torque uh, in foot pounds I've converted to newton meters. So here's our code, here's our implementation of that. We have different regions, different speed regions. If the speed is less than zero, we shouldn't get asked to provide a torque for speed less than zero, but it's good programming practice to, to sort of uh, deal with that possibility. If the torque is less than zero, we should return zero torque. Uh, if the torque is less than, or if the, sorry, if the speed is less than uh, 520 rads per second, uh, we're in the flat torque region. Uh, here, we're in the approximately linear region and so on. And if we're uh, asked what happens, if this function is asked what happens, at speeds above the maximum speed of the motor, the answer is, again, there's no torque. The motor does not function. So that's one example. The second example is uh, for a big diesel engine, which we've also looked at briefly in class. And the value of example case selects between one of these two uh, examples. So what you need to do is write down an equation that represents the speed torque curve that you measured in experiments on your motor. And you need to wipe out all of this code, all of this example code, or make it unreachable, 
and you need to put in a code that models your your own power plant okay so just going back up through the stack this function uh, tells uh, or it returns a value for torque into vehicle excel which uses that value of torque to work out a value of traction and uses that to find a value of acceleration that feeds back to OD45, which can use it to solve for velocity as a function of time. And that's how it works. So uh, the thing is set up at the moment uh, with example case of one, which selects the Tesla motor. It is set up for uh, values of that are kind of representative of the chassis of a, an ordinary car, uh, 850 kilograms, gear ratio of 0.25, and a road wheel diameter of 0.38. The gear ratio is maybe not typical of ordinary cars, but uh, it's sensible for a car with an electric motor, with a, well, this Tesla motor, which has much higher RPM than an ordinary car engine. So to run this thing, make sure that you're in the proper uh, directory uh, and simply uh, type the, um, the we're going to type uh, a command to invoke vehicle model, which is the top level function of this program, pretty much as it's written in the file, but um, we need to give it a value for the initial velocity. I'm going to set zero so that it's starting from rest. That's in meters per second. And we need to give it a value for the maximum time in seconds that we want to run for. So there it goes. It has run very quickly. Uh, let's plot some results. Let's plot time and uh, speed. Uh, there it is. <clears throat> so this is speed as a function of time. I'm going to uh, label up those axes. So our code is telling us that the car is going to accelerate up to about uh, 65 meters per second uh, over a period of about 10 seconds, and then, then it doesn't uh, accelerate anymore. The reason it doesn't accelerate anymore is that we're up at the top of the, we're, up, we're at the maximum speed of the motor then, and no more torque is available to give us more acceleration. Remember, in this graph, there is no, in this calculation, there is no aerodynamic drag, no rolling resistance at the moment. So we're up to pretty high speeds here. So aerodynamics certainly uh, should be in the model and would be becoming significant up at those speeds. So your main uh, route to using this model is calling the function vehicle model. Okay, you will not need to call the other functions directly. However, uh, you will want to check that your power plant speed torque characteristic is correctly implemented so it's a good idea to run um, the power plant torque function directly just to check that it is giving sensible results okay so let's take a look at that function again it's a function that has one input angular velocity and has one output uh, torque so if we want to look at how it at what it's doing over a range of speeds we need to iterate we need to put it inside a loop and call it many times for different values of speed. So I'm going to set up a vector of um, angular velocity values from 0 to 1500 radians per second in steps of 1. I am going to write a loop to uh, loop over all the elements uh, of that vector. And for every one of them, I'm going to calculate the torque by calling our function. Uh, I'm going to pass in one value from our vector of angular velocities and I'm going to store the result in uh, one entry in a vector of torques. And you can write loops like this. You can write any code at the command line. You can write loops like this. Um, or if you prefer, you can create a script and, and put this code into the script. So that should have run now. I can uh, plot the results of that. And label it. Uh, well, label torque. And there we go. Okay, so that looks uh, roughly like the original plot of the Tesla motor characteristic, uh, except that it's uh, now in different units. So when you implement a characteristic for your own motor, you should make sure to check that it's working, check that that function is working correctly by doing something like this then you know that your function is giving the correct information back up to vehicle excel when it's called here and vehicle excel can feed the correct information back up to the top level program vehicle model any questions
post them on Piazza, please. Good luck. <laughs>